I want to go now to David Kennedy. He's a former hacker for the NSA and the Marine Corps, and now the CEO of the cybersecurity company Trusted Sec. So let me just ask you, FBI Director Ray compares these attacks uh, to the challenges of 9-11. Obviously, he did not do so lightly. Your job is to, to, to look at these vulnerabilities and see how at risk we are. How at risk is America? Unfortunately, uh, extremely. Uh, and, and that's not to say it very, very lightly either. You know, over 85 percent of our critical infrastructure, which you can consider energy, water treatment facilities, um, you know, obviously the food chain that we just saw, colonial pipelines with the gas, uh, they're all owned by private sector organizations. And they, their, their security is, is really lacking in almost every aspect. And they're, they're not capable of handling the types of threats that they're seeing from these organized crime groups who are continuously getting more and more sophisticated, especially as more and more money funnels into them. So it's a, a really big issue that we have both in our critical infrastructure and the corporations that we have here in the United States. I, I think it's fair for people to you know, take a pause and think of just the way we all live our lives right now. Uh, if certain things are really shut down, you know, you're days away from complete chaos. Um, and it's pretty yes. terrifying when you think about it. These attacks that we've seen, as you point out, every facet of our society, our food chain, our energy, our hospitals, um, could this, David, be a test for something much larger? Well, here's the thing. These, these groups, these organized crime groups, are making hundreds of millions of dollars. We deal with hundreds of, of these types of cases on a yearly basis dealing with these ransomware groups. And predominantly out of Russia, ro operate with impunity with the Russian government, uh, which means they're allowed to do whatever they want to as long as they don't impact the Russian government and cause chaos here. Here's the thing. So organized crime groups, I would say, or let's just say, you know, at our sophistication level of here, you know, when you start looking at nation states uh, like Russia, for example, the FSB, you look at the, um, uh, look at uh, the People's Liberation Army of China, you know, their sophistication levels are way up here. Uh, and, and when you see how vulnerable we are to these specific types of attacks, if there's ever any type of conflict with Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, they all have very sophisticated cyber warfare capabilities. Uh, you can definitely expect some major pain happening back here in the United States and with our allies. Uh, we're, we're highly vulnerable. These groups are highly sophisticated. The organized crime groups are sophisticated. Uh, it's, a, it's a real big mess right now that we're dealing with um, on the defensive side of the house. Well, it's pretty incredible when you think about it, that if somebody wanted to shut everything down and cause societal chaos, they could do so. I think people don't necessarily realize that that could happen. It, it could. There's, there's, there's multiple groups that could do that right now. I mean, and then what's happening, as you point out, is that a lot of these places, these things that are being attacked are run privately, not by the U.S. government. That's the way our country operates, capitalist country. So Colonial Pipeline actually paid ransom, $4.4 million to hackers. So the hackers got the money. You say they're making hundreds of millions. Well, that's why. And the CEO of Colonial uh, went on NPR to explain why he paid up. The conversations went like this. Do you pay the ransom or not? And of course, the initial uh, thought is you don't want to pay the ransom. You don't want to encourage. You don't want to... Uh, pay these contemptible criminals. But our job and our, our duty is to the American public. It was the right decision to make for the country. I mean, David, look, you were having panic. You were having people put gas in bags. I mean, so so I understand where he's coming from. I guess one way of asking this question, though, is what terrifies me is there was no other way out. There wasn't somebody who could come in and undo what they had done that it was so sophisticated that the only way out was actually paying the ransom. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, I got goosebumps as you said that because I've seen this time and time again. I've been in the, in the boardroom where CEOs are literally bawling in tears because of their family-owned business is completely shut down over 100 years running, and they have no other way of recovering other than paying these ransoms. And you know, let's be very clear. These, these groups that are, being, um, that are going after these companies are criminals, uh, and the people that are being hit by this are, are victims. Uh, and you know, everybody can say, don't pay the ransom, you know, and, and, and it's, it's easy to say that. But when your company that you've been running or you're in charge of, you, you employ hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people is literally completely shut down with no ability to ever recover. You're either out of business or you're paying these ransomware groups. And these groups are really, really, really good at maximizing as much damage as possible, going after your backups, going after your servers, going after everything. And it's not just encrypting. They also now take your data and house that as ransom as well. So now they, they take all your data, they steal it into their, their servers, and then they'll auction that off to say, well, hey, if you can still recover, we can still publish all of your intellectual property. And all of a sudden you're in a double whammy situation. Right. Well, then you're then you're hostage. Or, right, for, for right. as long as they want. All right, David, thank you very much. Pretty sobering conversation. Thank you, though. Thank you.